Hey, good morning. Is this thing on? All right, <laughs> we're going here. Uh, like always, we are going to start with a little bit of music from Burial Grid because, well, I like Burial Grid. Um, actually, uh, this weekend I kind of discovered a, uh, a, a Soviet era synth band, which is, uh, their music videos have really been entertaining me because they're just top notch ridiculous. Um, uh, something is lost in translation. I don't know if they're just bad, but like it's extra hilarious to watch them because of that. So yeah, that's what I've been doing this weekend. But today we are going to draw Catherine Hellman. She passed away last week, um, and she was in a bunch of stuff I really enjoyed, and I think you guys should check out. Which is not who's the boss. You can check out Who's the Boss, too, if you want, but uh, I'm not recommending it. So give me a moment, folks. Um, I'm going to get uh, the chat room set up. So I can see the messages that all you lovely sent me. I don't even know. But I greatly appreciate everybody who's been, um, you know, watching my videos. Of Catherine Hellman from the classic film Brazil. And if you have not seen Brazil, oh, I got to turn on my apple pencil, don't I? Yeah, if you've not seen Brazil, you absolutely need to check out this movie. It is phenomenal. Um, it, it, it's, uh, one of Gilliam's best. Now, Terry Gilliam, the director of the film, uh, I will be honest, does have a bit of a pacing problem with a lot of his films. And, um... If you go in aware of the pacing problems... usually works out pretty good, but I don't think Brazil has that much pacing problems like, say, like, Time Bandits, which is another great Catherine Hellman film. She's a very small part in that. I absolutely love her in Time Bandits. She plays the ogre's wife. So like, stop playing with your food! She's, she's, she's just brilliant. And if you really want to watch something that she, she's uh, absolutely wonderful in, you got to watch the absolutely brilliant um, Soap. Catherine Hellman was, oh, well, Soap was just great. Soap was a 70s sitcom um, that was a soap opera, but it was a satire of a soap opera. So it just, things got really, really ridiculous. Um couple of the highlights of the show, besides Catherine Hellman, uh, was uh, Billy Crystal playing a gay character. Now, was the, uh, you know, are there problems with his character? Uh, you know, the way he was presented? Absolutely. Uh, talk to a gay person to actually, you know, understand them. I think uh, Matt Baum covered it a little bit on his channel. But one of the brilliant things that they did is they made um, uh, his character the most relatable in the entire show. So, I mean, he's dating a, you know... Um, uh, they got Billy Crystal dating a guy who's um, has a ventriloquist dummy. He's homophobic. That's actually kind of hilarious. <laughs> you 
And, and I mean, the show is just that absurd the entire time. It is, it is just an insane show. Catherine Helmond is one of the matriarchs of the, the two main families of the show. And she just is fantastic. She's just completely out of touch with reality and the show just keeps building on on just the pure insanity of that. But, uh, yeah. And one of the things I always want to know is why did Catherine Helmond and Betty White never do a project together? Because, uh, I mean, they they both were working uh, till way into the later years of their lives, so it's entirely possible that they could have done something together. And I mean, as much as I love Betty White, um, I mean, hell, I have a t-shirt with her on it. Um, you do. It says Betty White's my home girl. Um, uh, it, what was I saying? I got distracted by my t-shirt. No, as much as I love Betty White, she she's never been as anything as brilliant as uh um Catherine Helmond. I mean she's putting brilliant performances, don't get me wrong. I I I adore her in uh uh Lake Placid and Boston Legal. But I wouldn't put Boston Legal up against Brazil. Brazil is a, a satire for the ages. Also a very important film visually. Um, there are two movies that came out in the uh, the the early mid eighties um, that inspired Back to the Future, and one of them was Brazil. The other one was The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension, which I also highly recommend. But, like, uh, the images of, like, Doc Brown's lab is straight out of Brazil. Also, when I went to go see, um, uh, uh, what was that terrible movie? Uh, Sucker Punch. When I went to go see Sucker Punch with my friends, afterwards, um, uh, me and, uh, my friend Jamal were just sitting there going, Sam Lowry! <laughs> That's the movie. He just had a very Brazil ending. But without the brilliance of Brazil. Has anyone seen Sam Lowry? Yeah, when Terry Gilliam made uh, Brazil, it was supposed to be a commentary of the corporation, uh, corporative uh, frustrations of dealing with Hollywood. Corporatized frustrations. There we go. 
but quite frankly has much deeper resonance if you actually kind of dig into it. It's very much about late capitalism. And of course it's one of those brilliant movies where um, Uh, yeah, it's one of those just absolutely brilliant movies that, that, that you definitely need to watch. Um, oh. oh, I did that backwards. Okay, that's fine. But yeah, if you've not seen um, Brazil, it's starring the High Sparrow from Game of Thrones, Catherine Helmand. Uh, Michael Palin makes a rare appearance as a villain, which he's really good at. I mean, he's also really good at playing the nice guy. I, I mean... You know, his his performance in A Fish Called Wanda is just great, but, um... But his performance in Brazil is just phenomenal. Uh, Bob Hoskins is in it. Robert De Niro... Robert De Niro plays a renegade plumber. But uh, if you go ahead and watch it, you'll see that inspired movies like Robocop. Um... And Back to the Future. Uh, oh, just tons, tons, tons of movies. I mean, they just don't make movies like this. I'm pretty sure that uh, Brazil does have that pacing problem that uh, a, a lot of... Uh, it's been a while since I've seen it. Uh, I need to sit down and rewatch the movie. Uh, but yeah, it has this, the pacing problem that a lot of uh, Terry Gilliam films have. Which is why Terry Gilliam is a very well-respected director, but not you know considered like an absolute master. His movies are, are always worth checking out, though. Um, I mean, not just for Catherine Hellman, because, because, uh, I mean, Time Bandit, she has a very small but brilliant performance. Uh, you also got a great performance from, uh, Shelley Duvall, who I always, 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 always enjoy seeing her in things. Um, who else? Michael Palin's in, in that too. I think probably uh, the only movie that doesn't have that pacing problem that that uh, you know that Gilliam has is um, uh, the Fisher King. But all of his movies are definitely worth watching if you've not seen it. Uh, the 
the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus is phenomenal. Uh, and if you're a fan of Heath Ledger, you have to watch that movie. It's his last uh, on-screen performance. He died in the middle of making the film. It's not a perfect film by any stretch of the imagination because of that. But it's nice that they were able to at least uh, complete it even without him only in half the film. Basically, they had five different actors replace him. <laughs> Which sounds insane. Isn't it? Like, who are you going to replace him with? Uh, 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 all these people. <laughs> but, I mean, it's a Terry Gilliam film, so, you know, his movies aren't I don't want to sound like I, I'm, I'm crapping on Terry Gilliam, but like his movies are like these 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 flawed gems, you know. They're, they're they're absolutely beautiful, but like there's lots of problems with them. But they're always worth watching, so there, there is that. Of course, we all know the correct answer to who's the boss was Mona. Hey, yo, oh, hey, Angela. That was the worst Tony Danza impersonation you will hear today. Guarantee it. Probably be the only Tony Danza impersonation. This one, I'm just might cross hatch and forget about doing the whole background thingy. We'll see.
I should probably start a poll on my Twitter of who I should draw on Friday. I kind of want to do, um, uh, oh, the guy from Prodigy, Keith, uh, just forgot his last name. I, I am sorry. The, the guy from Prodigy who passed away recently, um, I think it was a suicide. Um, I did draw him during October. He did like classic him. So what is your favorite Katherine Hellman performance? And for the most part, what is your favorite Terry Gilliam film since she did two with him? Might as well ask that. At least two. But if you want to see Gilliam's, like, worst pacing problem, check out uh, uh, The Adventures of Baron von Munchausen, which is a visually stunning film. I mean, here's, here's the thing about the movie. You got um, uh, so, some, of the, some of the most incredible practical effect, visual effects you'll ever see in a film. Um, you have uh, Eric Idle and Michael Palin just being uh, hilarious. Robin Williams as a disembodied head on the moon who, who's who can't find his body. Apparently his body's off having an affair with somebody. Um, uh, Pre-Pulp Fiction Uma Thurman, completely naked. Uh, you know, just, just so much going on in this movie. Um, it, it is absolutely surreal and, and a beauty to watch, but it is so boring. You would think Robin Williams being completely un- Robin Williams would not make the movie boring. No, it's still boring. Because Terry Gilliam doesn't always pace films well. Now, um, his later films have gotten much better. Parnassus... Certainly better paced. Um, Brazil's one of the better ones. Uh, Twelve Monkeys. That one's pretty well paced, too. Um... 
recent one he did. I have to look this one up. Terry Gilliam. Uh, zero theorem. That was the movie I was trying to think of. So, ah, uh, Just take a little oh, would you look at that that's starting to come together So anyways, um, I don't know if I finished saying this thought, because I got distracted, but uh, the guy from Prodigy who passed away recently, and Luke Perry passed away this week, who should I draw on Friday?
Let me know in the comments. I'll probably be posting a Twitter poll later. If I remember. I'm saying this now. Probably forget. Uh, I always kind of liked Luke Perry. I, I, I thought he uh, never quite got his due. He seemed to be destined for it, but like I think 90210 kind of hurt him for a while. I'm very psyched to see him in the uh, upcoming Quentin Tarantino film. He's, uh, he's in, uh, what is it, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, where he plays a uh, television cowboy. in the chat. Let's see what's popping in the world. Oh, King Kong Bundy passed away. That is unfortunate. I met him once. He was a nice guy. I'm not a wrestling fan either, so, like... But he was at, um... There was this, uh comic convention that was held in the basement of a church in Manhattan. And, um, he was in the basement. I think War was there. And, um... I know this story's already getting really weird. <laughs> like, uh, a little bit more now that I, I'm an adult. You know, like when The Rock's dad was a wrestler. Before um, the, 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 the right-wing pieces of crap who run it now uh, took over. When I was a kid growing up in Georgia, there was a, 
a channel 69 on the TV, which kids, they don't even have TVs that go up that high anymore. <coughs> uh, that would be uh, Bush's fault. Anyways, um... But uh, they used to have wrestling on there, which was actually a lot more interesting than, than the WWF stuff. Because it was like, well, they had Glow. Not the TV show, but the original thing that is all inspired by. They had like really weird wrestling too, and I, I can't even remember. But that channel was weird because like uh, they'd show like obscure... Kung Fu movies, um, D, you know, like, like really bad, uh, anime, god awful shows like Denver the Last Dinosaur, Saber Rider and the Star Sheriffs. But, like, it was a privately owned, like, mom-and-pop TV station. Which is, again, something we don't have anymore. So it was kind of awesome with that, with that weird hodgepodge of uh, programming that they had. You know what? All right. Why not, people? The highlights in here. Oh, wait. What am I doing? Okay, let's try this again here. smudge a little on top of that.
at that. And I come in here. Ah! Ah! That wouldn't work. There we go. I think that looks about done. Should I do the draw the guy from Prodigy or um, uh, Luke Perry on Friday? Because uh, I don't know what I'm doing for Friday. Or I could do something completely different. Um, yeah. There's lots of things I could be doing. But anyways, um, thank you everybody for uh, watching. Thank you uh, for, for uh, all your support. All the kind words that I get. Uh, so I do get a lot of kind words and I, and I really do appreciate it. Um...